I want to share some parts of this talk that I gave with Dr. Grace Lasker and the North American Conference for Data Analysis with uh, and a company called Jump who makes this data analysis software. And my part of it's the second part where I talk about some real world examples and using the software for positive change. Some of it's going to look familiar from your module five and I wanted to share some real world photos and parts. This, this part is uh, Grace's part, which you can read if you like, but the part that's cogent for this section is not there, is this part here. So this is this is something that I've, I've seen when, when I was in Zambia uh, a year and a half ago. This is with this pipe on the left here is waste flowing out of a hospital, of a clinic. And on the right, you see what it looks like outside of that clinic. Like everything is dead here. The problem I was solving is the this problem of pouring hospital waste that contains cyanide and most of the viral load testing from COVID and Ebola and AIDS testing all contains uh, some amount of cyanide. So it's killing everything around these clinics and, and it's also hazardous to people. So one of the things I was trying to do is help to remove the cyanide in, in Africa. Here's another image. This is an incinerator. This is outside of a hospital. This is an incinerator in Malawi. It's outside in the forest and they literally throw wood and garbage, mostly medical garbage, into a giant iron box in the forest and they just burn it. That's uh, another waste uh, treatment method. Uh, this is me finding alternate methods. This is bringing some waste. You can see some blood on this container here on the right. Uh, to hospital waste to a cement kiln with my, my friends here and this is in Chilonga and we are mixing it into cement uh, actually there's some various reasons for that but this is a nice uh, alternative uh, here is uh, chemical and infectious waste storage in South Africa you can see the waste coming out of these drums here and you can see all these yellow and red containers that people are trying to find ways of disposing the sharps and needles and body fluids and band-aids and those kind of things are all just piles and piles in a warehouse here. That's in Johannesburg. Uh, this is in Ethiopia. This is drinking water outside of a, uh, actually, actually it's outside of a hospital with gloves and vials, but people drink and wash in this water here. Here's, here's a person actually washing his clothes in that exact water. He's not maybe three feet from that water I showed you previously. And he's washing his clothes on a rock. Uh, with the growing corn and cabbage right here on the other side. This is incidentally in their CDC uh, parking lot in, in Addis Ababa. This is the living spaces that are nearby, what they look like. And this is just neighborhood waste. They, these bags are just sort of abandoned on the street. There's gloves and vials and their water. This I don't know if this video will play, but you'll see what it looks like when I don't know if you can hear this, but this is, they have a, a brick hut and this is infectious waste. They just walk up and they just throw it in and burn it. And all the smoke and fumes are maybe 20 feet, 30 feet from houses. I'll show you a habitable structure right here on the right. You see that there's just, yeah, there's just people just living right here next to this stuff. And let's see if I can go on to the next slide here. This is a warehouse full of waste. This is also in Ethiopia. This is in Adama. And yeah, this is just medical hospital waste that needs to be burned. Here's removing. This is some of the stuff I did. This is removing cyanide from hospital waste. This gray material is the cyanide. And this is where people wash their vegetables and pick up their food in the gutter where this waste would have would have run right here. Um so I'll let you read some of these. These facts are in your in your reading. So I won't go over, I won't belabor too much of this, but there are a lot of downstream consequences to human health and other problems that, that, that we try to avoid by practicing green chemistry practices. Um, so how do we do this? How do we do this green chemistry thing? How do we implement some of these tools, right? Well, we talk about greenwashing, which is when they fake it. A lot of times people claim that things are green. They don't really understand the, the 12 principles of green chemistry. They aren't really making, they're genuinely making an effort. And that's a big key is they, there has to be, if someone's greenwashing, they have, there has to be an element of deception to call it greenwashing. If they just don't know, it's not really 
the really green washing. Um, how does a process development chemist initiate, assess, evaluate a green chemistry approach and improve its sustainability goals, right? That's what one of the things we want to do as a chemist and scientists in general. We want to make sure that it works. Like the, any process that we come up with has to work first. And we have to do this with, a, with something called a DOE or a designed experiment. And the viability means, does it work? Like, is it still working if you switch to greener chemical? That's the number one thing. You, you got to have that. And, you know, I, I give an example here for some processes. It might be how waterproof your jacket is or another, how clean something is. I use auto parts later. That's just, you have to have this metric and measure it. And data is what we use to determine this viability. And the model is the mathematical relationship we show between the things we change and how this viability has changed. So if I say, what is a model? Here we have a chemical process. I, I call this thing in the middle the chemical process. And we have chemicals, one, two, three, four, let's say. We're a mixture of only, we're a mixture design for chemicals. We have the factors, those are the factors on the left. And then the responses are here on the right. So the things that come out of this are the responses, these things that we measure, the factors, things we put in. They're affected by noise. Noise are the things that we aren't controlling, don't know we could control, and or um, or we just don't care about. And in this case, I give the examples of responses might be human toxicity that might be important to us, environmental impact, how will we measure that? Energy consumption, costs, and always, of course, viability. And this is this is how the model would be constructed we, we sometimes have a lot of noise, just to talk about the noise in general, it adds to, we have these, these outputs on the right. What does the noise do to that? Well, the noise puts a wiggle into different things differently. Like a certain type of noise might only affect viability or energy consumption and not everything else. Other noise might affect human toxicity, nothing else. So we just need to be aware of it and the way to handle it is usually to do replicates or more experiments and try to remove it if we can. So what about optimizing and understanding these trade-offs if we make this, this model, right? Here's an example that I'm giving you now. I have two companies, and this is later in our module. I, have, I, I made these logos. These are fake companies. I drew these up myself. Technotron, and then it wants to change its name to Envirotron, right? It wants to, to upgrade, sort of. And they're rebranding themselves. And they want to take benzene, which is a carcinogenic chemical, looks like this on the left, and they want to substitute with toluene, which is a lot safer. So they want they want a greener solvent. They just they just said, let's just try this stuff seems greener. Let's just see what happens. And they just do it right. They just replace it in their their cleaning process. And, and in this example, they're cleaning automotive parts. So they use this other cleaner. And they want to know if they made a best choice. So let me see if I can get this to play here. So in this example, we have. We say, okay, we'll look at benzene in versus time. We do some measurements after a year, right? Do we make a best choice? What do we do? So the toxicity of benzene was extreme and toluene is not toxic at all. So that's great. But what's the material cost? Well, our cost went from $265,000 a year to $703,000 a year. Okay, well, that's more. But we, we, we've said that uh, carcinogenicity, carcinogenicity is, is important to us, the toxicity in that, in that respect. But what about toxicity for reproductive health. We don't really have any data. We have no idea if that's better. What's a typical type of example? We just don't know. Then we have material scrap costs, like the how many parts would we scrap because of the chemical wasn't working, because the chemical wasn't working very well. Well, it was $200,000 a year worth of parts versus $800,000 a year worth of parts. So scrap costs quadrupled, the material costs almost tripled, and the processing time was 20% longer and the environmental impact was low in both cases. So it's better in some ways and not so good in others. So what does that mean? Do we make the best choice? Could we have made a better choice? Do we have to waste all this money and this time getting here? And the answer is we don't know. Well, well how do we know? How would we find out, right? So just as an overview, we have some things were good, some things were blank, some things were bad and this is this is our balance sheet for this choice well we need to create a business case and a, a technical case and we do that by building a model based on the research data and we combine it with experimental data we just look up some stuff and sometimes we figure it out ourselves so you've seen this before of course 
me build this model. I'm just reminding you of what we're doing here. We're building this mathematical relationship between the factors and the responses. And what would it look like? Well, we might start with a table of all the things that we might want to, to monitor for responses. And we say, which ones are important? We give a 10 to the things that are most important to us and a one to the things that are least. And you have to make a decision. You can't just make everything 10 or the system will break. It just won't work. And you give things these limits. You have to sort of make this up and you go when you start. And then you put them in a table and you give them an importance and you pick some of them out at first. You can do all of them, but you might want to just pick a few. And how are you going to measure it? This is how we were going to measure these things, the like kilowatt hours, the lethal dose for 50% of the population, the CO2 emissions, cost, we have to figure these things out, the viability. And so we're going to be able to look up human toxicity. We won't be able to look up cost. We'll just have to buy the stuff and get a quote for it. Maybe we can look it up that way. And viability, we'll have to do experiments, right? We have to give them realistic importances. And we can, we can decide whether these are easy or continuous variables or they're categorical variables variables like whether they can only be listed as like one, two, three, four, five, or the continuous numbers, these kind of things we need to make choices on, whether they're easy to change and hard to change, also affects the cost and the difficulty of the experiments. Well, we run some experiments, we look up some data for benzene, toluene, xylene, and phenol in this case, and we look up the cost, and then we measure by experiment how well these blends, 50% benzene, 50% toluene, no xylene, no phenol, for example, have 90% of the parts came out clean, right? This is the viability data. Then we, we populate this table with all the stuff we can look up, which is here in green, the things that we can research ourselves but weren't in a book, or we just buy the stuff, we get this here, or we get viability and we do these viability, this blue parts experiments. And let's go back to this part again. Oh, here's, the, here's what a profiler looks like. So we model the profiler it looks like this. Let me see if I can get this to work for you. So this is what that profiler would look like. We have the cost, the flammability, the bioaccumulation, the birth defects, and the amounts of these other compounds here on the bottom. We have phenol, benzene, toluene. I'll make this, squish this down a little bit so you can see a little better. Let me see if I can squash this down for you. I guess I can't make it any smaller fit in that window. But what you can do is you can say, well, if I had more xylene, what would that look like? How would it affect the bioaccumulation? What if I added more phenol, but it came at the cost of some other things? What if I just wanted to see less bioaccumulation, right? How would I, how would I model that? You can scoot that down or up, right? And it's kind of nice because these purple triangles you see here, they're called sensitivity indicators. I can turn those off they tell you how steep the slope is. So it's, is it more sensitive at one part in the curve or another? You can see these kind of things, kind of, it's interesting to, to note that. I can also add, um, if, I did re if I did more than one test or I had replicates, I could do error bars, which is also nice. I can also go back in here and given the desirability, I've said that this is very desirable, that I don't care so much, I can go back and just optimize to desirability and it will give me the where give me the optimum where I should run everything I want. This says 24% xylene, 75% toluene, no benzene, no phenol. Should give me these results. And of course I've got replicates to see if that works for me. And it's it's kind of fun. It's kind of nice to do these kind of things. It, it's a good time. You can actually run a simulator too. Uh, I didn't put any error in here, so I can just add some random noise because I didn't do any replicates of this, which you should do if you want to simulate it. And you can simulate the data to a table. Let me see if I can scooch this down a little bit here. And so basically that's what you can do. There are different ways to look at this too. You can look at it like a 3D image or a, a contour, and you can do all kinds of different things to, to look at it differently. And I'll shut this down. If I can show you just a little bit more, oh, never mind. I closed jump all the way. I can, um, oh, it says it quit unexpectedly. So, okay, well, that's not great. Let's open this back up. Let's see what we got here. 
Yeah, so here's what this table looks like, this, this data table. And you can build a model right from this. So if we wanted to, we could just go to analyze fit model and this table might come up and we can put these mixtures here. And we want to look at just, if we want to look at just say acute toxicity uh, and some, not everything at once, because we can get a lot of, whoops, let me go back. I'll leave, I'll take acute tox, I'll take cancer, acute toxicity out. I'll add cost back. And then I'll just do a least standard least square, just the most basic model, and it will tell you, you know, what would this model look like? Like how would we, how would you run this thing? And uh, you can see it. It's kind of fun. Uh, you can play around. Well, let's move on a little bit here, and that's that's the profiler. And then we say, well, what's this process like? Well, we make a design experiment. We run some experiments, but we do some research. We populate the data table. We run the model. Uh, we do what we call a sensitivity analysis, which is to uh, understand how big those purple triangles are, which are the most sensitive variables. We optimize, which I showed you how to do the optimization. You report and show people what you got. Then they're going to say, oh, please go do replicates and go back and do it again. And then you report again. And then when you're done, hopefully that is enough information for you to uh, introduce some change. and. So there you go. This is a nice fake example of how it would be done, but that's essentially the process. I hope you enjoyed it. Take care. Bye-bye.